There we go. Hello everyone and welcome to one of my favorite cars, my 2000 Honda Insight Hybrid with a manual transmission. And unfortunately with this car, there is an inconvenient truth. Global warming has driver's side window does not roll up or down. And there's actually two reasons why. First off, the motor's burned out. But the reason the motor's burned out is because the switch is just a bit saggy. So here is the only window switch in a Honda Insight. The passenger is not allowed to roll their own windows up or down. It is entirely up to the discretion of the driver if they get any cool air or outside fresh air or not. But the problem here is with this auto up or down window here for the driver's side. If you see I scroll it down, it doesn't auto return to center. So what that has a tendency to do is get stuck in that position and just burn the motor out, which is uh, what's happened currently. So the motor is actually unhooked at the moment. And uh, there is actually a way to fix this and it involves 3D printing, which is always fun. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that switch out, which isn't as simple as you might think, but still not all that bad. This whole surround here has to come out. And then what that involves is removing this trim around the steering column. And then one, two screws there with a third screw hidden behind this panel. So uh, Phillips head screwdriver should get us a good bit of the way through here. And I think we just start right under here with presumably a Phillips head screw. These might be JIS, who knows? Wow, I got that by feel. Got one of the best tools ever made, the ratcheting, uh, little baby ratchet thing. So now that those are out over here, uh, take some pliers, put a cloth over them, and this little piece right here on the far right, just to the right of the uh, vents, just grab that and pull it out. And there's another Phillips. Yep. Now it just starts popping out. There we go. Okay. Ha ha ha, whole thing's loose. Now I have to figure out a way to finagle out electrical connections. Looks like three connections here on this side. The whole dash tilts downward this way. I finally got these unplugged uh, after popping. It takes a bit of forcing to pop this up and past the dashboard. But now it seems, seems to be coming. There we go. Uh, I did crack it just a little bit. But now we have access to the back and here you can see the window switch module. And there it is. So here is our window switch. Oh, it goes this way. Up, and then the down isn't working. So we need to get into here. So let's just, okay. Oh, dang it. Stay. Oh gosh, you have to do like all four sides at once? Three sides. Hmm. Oh, huh. easier than I thought. Okay. Oh, interesting. Okay, so the uh, passenger switch is this thing, which is just click, click, up and down. And then the uh, driver's side is this, like, rheostat looking guy. But what we're interested in is this stuff here. And... I might have to go look at a guide to figure out how to get this apart. But basically, you know, you can see, yeah, there's something broken internally here. 
Okay, I brought this into my incredibly messy office here so that we can hopefully get into it a little bit. Here we go. Um, flathead works too, but uh, the beveled side on this seems to make that a little easier. Out comes, okay, so it looks like we've got this little spring-loaded uh, centering portion here. So that part is usually broken, but isn't. And then we have this guy here, which in theory just pushes out. Ah, okay, you can see there what's broken. Right here, that just lifts up. And the other side is still intact, which is why we had uh, a good feeling auto up, but not down. So now I'm just gonna push this out of the switch somehow. That is solid. I think basically this entire face pushes back in there. Yay, I ended up getting it. I, uh, I stuck this in my vise so that it was sitting there like this and then uh, tapped on the auto with a screwdriver and a hammer. And uh, yeah, eventually it popped out. So you can see uh, the piece of plastic that broke here and the piece of plastic that is probably in the process of breaking here. So we're not gonna use that anymore. Here's the other piece of it. And we're not going to use this anymore because this also commonly breaks. What I've got instead is this nice selection of 3D printed ones. Nice selection just so that, you know, in case one of them doesn't quite work. So let's go ahead and just load this on up in here. Yeah, that, that stuck through just fine. And then this goes in here, if I remember correctly. It's a somewhat unfortunate reality of 3D printing that sometimes things aren't as precise as we would like. So in this case, the tolerance in here isn't quite great enough for this uh, spring-loaded uh, anvil. And so I'm gonna have to open it up a little bit. <laughs> Unfortunately, at this stage in the life of uh, 3D printing as a hobby, this sort of thing is just probably necessary for a lot, of, ooh, a lot of prints, but hey, look at that. It doesn't get stuck in here anymore. Sweet, so what I'm gonna do now is lube the crap out of it. Good old Shinetsu grease. Put that in there. Put this in here. Now it's all about this piece here, this sort of saddle. I think I wanna lube that as well. You'll see here on the saddle that there's this chunk taken out here. That fits into, uh, there's like an LED on the circuit board. There's just a little, a, two little pieces in here where this seats. And um, basically that, that scoop that's taken out of it is going to go towards the left, I believe. And you can grab it from the other end just to uh, pull it through the rest of the way. And uh, what that radius is, is making room for the uh, big old LED that normally would have been lighting up that light pipe. Now, we take our nice spring-loaded guy here, and uh, this long part goes towards the middle, and we just snap it in. That feels pretty good. I mean, it's a little mushy compared to this one, and I think that has something to do with the way that the uh, 3D printed parts are shaped and interfacing with each other, but overall, if it works, it works, right? <laughs> So let's go throw this all back together in the car before uh, I've already lost the light. Wonderful. To reassemble this, we'll just take our PCB here. Kind of want to make sure that that is centered, this is centered, and then drop the two together. Feels like it's doing stuff. Cool. And this. So if I remember correctly, the window was intermittent, so I unplugged it, but I should be able to take this apart, hook the motor back up, and get a pretty good idea of if the switch works or not, which I'd really like to do before I go putting that entire mess of a dashboard back together.
Yeah, that's... The motor is unhappy. But, as you can tell by clicking, that's working beautifully. So let's see if we can get this window motor figured out. Oh boy, has this turned into a mess, both figuratively and literally. Uh, basically, they don't make, well, okay, they do make these uh, window regulators still, but uh, they're like $400 used. So the problem with mine is that the brush, well, one brush, the brushes are worn out on the motor. So I took the brush holder out and I bought this Honda Civic window regulator, hoping I could swap just like the motor assembly. Well, uh, the motor assembly, oh wait, no, this is the original one. Whatever, this motor assembly, uh, you, wait, which one is which now? I genuinely don't remember. This is the original one. You can't take the motor off of this. So that didn't work. So I took out the brush holder, which is, this one, this is this one, okay. Took out this brush holder and uh, uh, yeah, so I'm gonna try and swap the brushes over because it also took the brush holder out of the uh, new Honda Civic regulator, which is this one. And the brushes are the same, but the holder is a bit different uh, as well as the electrical connection. So you can see I've already started prying out the brush here. I'm just going to take both of these brushes out stuff them in that holder, put that regulator back together, and hopefully we're, we'll be good to go as soon as I get these hiccups to go away. The new brushes are now in there, and I just remembered I'm in it. This isn't, this isn't the Honda Civic regulator. This is uh, the right side, the right hand window regulator out of my other car, and the reasons that the uh, brushes don't move over is because this one appears to have like some sensing stuff in it for the auto up down, and so it has a different harness and different internal structure, whatever. Uh, it does, however, seem to have, oh no, I wonder if this stator's different. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and use the passenger side stator uh, if it's not wound in the opposite direction, just because uh, it's less worn, probably. So now I just have to go grab the stator and the can and slap those in there, and uh, this should be good to go. And I'll, uh, of course, put some Shinetsu grease all over all of that, just to try and give this thing as uh, long of a life as I can. And I'll try and collect every single one of these I ever see come up in a part out, because I do not want to pay $400 for a new one. <laughs> Oh, okay, interesting. So they're wound the same direction, but this one has uh, the different contacts for whatever it is, the little the little brushes for the auto up-down stuff. So, yep, I'll just use this one. I cleaned it up as much as I could with a Scotch-Brite pad, and I'll just reinstall this and stick the can on. And uh, I'll have to test this before I actually uh, put it all the way back in the car because the direction that the can is on will make it run backwards and up will be down if I don't get that right, so. Up, oh, <laughs> I got it backwards. Down is up and up is down. Okay, well, quick fix. Just flip that around. And now up is up and all is right with the world. All right, let's get this thing stuck back in here. So I did a little bit of probing around with a voltmeter and trying to jump stuff with a 12 volt battery and for whatever reason the motor is just getting stuck. And then no amount of voltage will make it move even though I, I even took the rotor and stator, or the rotor? Yeah, took the rotor out with it still installed in the door, gave it another cleanup like that. Copper is shiny, but no dice. And I'm not sure what's going on. I'm going to do a little bit more Googling, but uh, with the meter, I was able to confirm that my window switch is working correctly, so at least I can get the dashboard back together. And then I guess I'll park this thing in the garage because the window is stuck down. <laughs> Yay!
I was really confused by why the motor was not working. And so I took the whole regulator back out and I started doing some continuity tests and there was no continuity through the motor. So I took the rotor out and I tested the rotor. I tested every pair of coils and they all had good continuity. Then I noticed a little component on the, I believe what's, I guess it really isn't a negative or positive lead since it's a DC motor, but one of the legs had this component in it and I tested that and it was an open circuit. And I'm pretty sure what that was, was a, uh, a circuit breaker that has gone bad in the motor itself. And I tried to, uh, uh, I looked to see if I could move over the circuit breaker from my uh, passenger side motor I have over there. Unfortunately, they are different. So I bypassed it and I'm pretty sure. So what that does is if like the, if the motor gets stuck in the moving down position for too long, that'll cut the power to it. I'm not entirely sure if that's to protect the motor or to prevent a fire, but since my, uh, since my window switch is fixed, that's not really a concern anymore. And I don't see a component like that in like my BMW's window motor when I opened it up. So maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe Honda was just being more conservative than most. Either way, I don't recommend doing that, but it works and it runs beautifully now. Uh, something else I did, this is the original window motor out of my car, which means it was in the smashed door that got backed into, which meant that the rail was actually slightly bent. So I unbent it now, which means that the bolt holes should actually line up now. It was always a pain getting this thing in and out because those bolt holes never quite lined up. That should also lessen the friction. And I also very, very liberally applied Shinetsu grease all along the track to the cable and around the edges of the track and whatnot. And I'm going to put it on the glass while the glass is out of the car to lubricate the track that the glass runs in. So uh, unfortunately it's dark now, so this is all gonna wait till tomorrow, but hopefully tomorrow I'll finally have a working window in my Insight and I can go hit up the drive-thru and get some food in the Insight. Okay, the window regulator is in. I greased up the, uh, I took out the glass and greased up the edges as well as running grease all up and down these tracks. And of course we greased up the, uh, the main track there itself. So, okay, let's see if it should, let's see if it, uh, let's go down first. Ooh, spicy. But does it go up? That's yeah, not bad. That runs pretty good, actually. It might it might work the grease in there a little bit more as it continues to go, but uh, heck yeah, look at that. Let's go again. Let's go again. Not bad, and you do seem to lose auto down and auto up uh, with the three D printed part mod, but eh. Whatever, actually I think it was auto down only. But yeah, there's not like the, the second detent when you go down now. So, okay. I think I can reassemble this with nothing more than a screwdriver. So let's go ahead and put all this back together and uh, give it a real world test drive. Uh, I want a Sonic, my name's Drew, I can help you. Hi, can I just get a uh, medium cherry limeade with no ice please? Anything else today? That'll do it. Thanks for watching.